By the end of this video, you'll know how to use the offset command in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. The offset command can be activated from the sketch dropdown list, from the right click sketch menu, by right clicking to activate the marking menu, selecting sketch, and then the offset option located in the lower left, or with the keyboard shortcut letter O as in Oscar. The offset command lets you copy the selected sketch geometry a specified distance away from the original geometry. If you'd like to follow along with this demo, I've set up some sketch geometry that you can download from the link below in the video description. The first piece of sketch geometry you'll see is a simple center rectangle. With the offset command active, you'll notice that the first thing to specify is which sketch geometry to offset. To specify the sketch geometry, simply click on the geometry and a red preview will appear, representing how the offset geometry will be created. Within the red preview, you'll see there is a blue slider icon. If you click and drag on the slider, you'll be able to manually adjust the offset sketch geometry. And you'll notice that I can drag the geometry to both the inside and the outside of the original sketch geometry. The second option in the dialog box is the chain selection checkbox. Chain selection is selected by default, which means when you select sketch geometry that includes multiple sketch entities, all of the geometry will be included in the offset. If I uncheck the chain selection checkbox, then I can select specific sketch entities that I don't want to be included. And I can always reselect the chain selection checkbox to reselect everything. The next option in the offset dialog box is the offset position. By typing out a dimension in the dialog box or directly in the offset input field, you'll be able to specify an exact offset distance, which is much more precise than manually sliding the offset geometry. The last option in the offset dialog box is the flip button. The flip button lets you quickly flip the offset geometry to the opposite side of the original sketch geometry. Once you're happy with the offset position, you'll want to click OK in the dialog box to confirm the offset results. After confirming the offset, the line will appear like all the other sketch geometry, and it can be used with the modeling commands, such as the extrude command. In some scenarios, you may find that you need to update the offset distance. To do so, simply double click on the offset dimension, type out a newly desired dimension, and hit the Enter key on your keyboard. If you were to delete the offset dimension, then the offset relationship remains. However, the distance is not locked into place. You'll see that I can drag the offset sketch geometry around. If you do delete the offset dimension, you can always reapply one. Simply right click on the offset icon and then select Add Offset Dimension. You'll notice that the offset dimension was reapplied. And once again, it can be double clicked on to be altered. It's important to note you can also add a regular sketch dimension if you've deleted your offset dimension. The difference is that the offset dimension will always stay next to the offset icons so you know what it represents, whereas a normal sketch dimension could be applied anywhere. Now the offset glyphs or icons that are next to both the original sketch geometry and the offset sketch geometry help signify that the sketch geometry has an offset relationship. 
If I double click on one of the original dimensions and alter the dimension, you'll notice that the offset sketch geometry updates accordingly, staying true to the defined offset dimension. If I were to click on the offset icon and hit the delete key on my keyboard, this would break the offset relationship. And if I select the geometry and move it around, you'll see that it is no longer constrained based on the offset relationship. For now, I'll simply hit the undo button a few times to return the sketch geometry back to the original relationship. The last thing that I want to show you with this specific sketch is the fact that you cannot create offsets from offset geometry. If I activate the offset command from the marking menu and select the offset rectangle, You'll notice it appears that it will work. However, an error message appears in the lower right hand corner stating that one or more of the selected curves has already been offset. Consider offsetting the original profile again instead. And you'll also notice that the OK button in the offset dialog box is also grayed out. So just keep this in mind as you're working with offset sketch geometry. You'll always need to offset from the original sketch geometry not other types of offset geometry. For the next demo, I'll double click on the second sketch labeled Spline to open it up. Within this sketch, I've set up some simple fit point splines. If I click on the spline to select it, you'll notice that there is one continuous path. I'll now activate the offset command from the sketch dropdown list. I'll select the spline on the left as the geometry to offset. And take notice how the offset only shows on the left part of the spline. If I manually drag the slider or click the flip button, then the offset will switch to the right side. However, if I select the simpler spline to the right, you'll notice that the offset geometry will show up on the outside of the closed spline path. So just be aware of this, when you're working with complex spline geometry, you may run into troubles with the offset command, especially if your splines cross over each other. For now, I'll stop the sketch and I'll turn the sketches off by clicking the corresponding light bulb in the Fusion 360 browser. Then I'll click the light bulb next to the shaft component to turn that on, and I'll make sure that the component is activated by right clicking on the component name and selecting the Activate option from the list. Most of the time, the offset command will come in handy when you already have parts of a model set up. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter O as in Oscar to activate the offset command. You'll see that because I don't have a sketch currently active, I'll have to select a face of some pre-existing geometry in order to create an offset. I'll simply select the top of the shaft component. Then I'll select the sketch geometry and type out an offset distance of 3 millimeters. I'll also make sure that the offset geometry is on the inside of the original geometry. And then I'll click OK. I'll then hit the keyboard shortcut letter E as an echo to call the extrude command. I'll select the inside sketch profile that was created with the offset command. I'll drag the blue directional arrow down to make sure it's cutting into the shaft, and I'll change the extent type to all to ensure that this cut will go all the way through the model, even if the length of the shaft is updated later on. Last but not least, I'll click OK. With just a few clicks of the keyboard and mouse, I was able to offset the overall shape of the shaft in order to cut out the middle. As you can see, the offset command is much more efficient than if I had to manually recreate all of this inside sketch geometry with different circles. One of the biggest benefits of the offset command is that I can update the parametric model without having to manually fix the other sketch geometry, which would have to be done if I didn't use the offset command. If I double click on the second sketch in the timeline and change the left circle to 25 millimeters and click enter, 
As I stop the sketch, you'll notice that the inside offset was automatically updated. And it always will update as long as that offset relationship stays intact. In summary, the offset command is used to speed up the design process by recreating complex sketch geometry without having to create it shape by shape. The offset command also ensures that sketch geometry relationships are updated accordingly when the original sketch geometry is altered. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.